Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today we are going to be talking about Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances. Now, if you have been a fan of the channel for a while, then you probably already know that I am a big Disney fan. I mean, I proposed to my wife in a very Disney-esque way, and we also named our first cat a Disney name. But there is a large chance that you, the viewer right now that is watching this video, is also a Disney fan. Now, I've had a lot of Disney Villainous on this channel. This game is not affiliated with Disney Villainous at all, but it is something that I was intrigued to talk about to you because I think that if you love Disney Villainous, this game might be for you. And also, another thing is that if you are a big fan of Unmatched, this is another game in the same kind of vein as that. Therefore, if you love Unmatched, this game could also be for you. Now, what is this game about? Well, it is a strategic skirmish game that you will play as a summoner, forming an alliance of heroes and villains from throughout the Disney and Pixar universe. Your team of characters will use a wide range of abilities in an effort to knock out rivals and score victory points. Have more victory points when the last turn ends and you will win the game. It is a contest of magic, muscle, and wits, and only one summoner will triumph in the arena. And the question they ask here is, can you assemble a team that will outmatch your rivals to win it all? I think I can, yes. Now this course set comes with eight characters that are all kind of different in their archetype. You've got kind of a spellcaster character, which is going to be your sorcerer's apprentice, Mickey. He has a lot of cool effects that he can do with magic brooms that allow him to draw cards, and he can do a lot of cool effects to continue to draw and see in the future a little bit with his cards that he draws. You've also got Ariel, you know, your typical healer class. She's gonna be going around tactically healing your allies and also has a couple of cool magical damage spells as well. You've got Aladdin, the sneaky, hard to hit character. He will oftentimes be stealthy, making him very hard to hit direct attacks on, and you'll have to focus on area of effect attacks in order to trip up Aladdin. We've also got Soli, who is very, very strong, and in this particular set has the most health in the game, but also gives the most victory points when defeated. One cool thing that Soli can do is he can actually travel by door. If he doesn't move on his turn, he can jump to an unoccupied space adjacent to an ally with four or fewer hearts, hopefully to protect them from being defeated. And then we've got my personal favorite, Gaston. You already know it, I'm a huge fan of Gaston. He is also a really big brute, has a lot of health, and he is really good at getting strong, dealing extra damage throughout his attacks, and his attacks hit really hard. Then we've got Maleficent, who has a wide range of different angled attacks. She can do some really cool area of effect damage, basically just kind of your burst damage attack character. She also has a Forces of Evil ability, which allows her to draw a lot of cards as long as she has dealt damage to many different characters and is in a certain position at the end of her turn. And then we've got Dr. Facilier, who is really good at giving status effects to his opponents. He can give curses, which make things really, really hard for your opponents, and he just has a fun time basically making everybody else's lives miserable. And then we've got the best starter character, which is going to have to be Demona. If she plays her cards right, she can remove all the status effects from her and then gain strength. And like I said, she is very, very good for players just starting out with the game to run Demona in their team or squad. Now that's just a quick rundown of the characters that you get in only the core set of this game. And I can only imagine there's going to be more expansions coming out. They've already announced one that's gonna come with Davy Jones, Moana, as well as Stitch, which I am very, very excited about. The rulebook has four different chapters, and each chapter is going to be getting increasingly more and more complex, but if you want the most strategic and full-bodied experience, playing chapter four is going to be where it's at. But maybe you have younger kids that you want to play with, and you could play chapter one or chapter two to make it a little bit easier for them. That way they can have an easier time playing. 
But like I said, the whole goal of this game is to be gaining the most victory points, and the way that you do that is by knocking out your opponent's characters. Knocking them out is bringing them to zero health, and then each one individually gives a certain amount of victory points. But there is another way to gain victory points, and that is to secure one of the three spaces in the center part of the board. And if you control one of these at the start of your turn, you are also going to be gaining a victory point. One thing that I think that this game does really, really well is having all of the cards and game mechanics be very, very thematic to each individual character. And the many, many combos that you can get between these characters is absolutely amazing. One of the things that I like to do is I actually like to have teams where I have Ariel and Gaston because Gaston is so good at hitting his opponents with high attack damage, which means that he wants to be in the face of his opponents, which means he's probably going to be taking a lot of damage while having Ariel just a few spaces away to heal up Gaston when he gets a little lower is a really good combination that you can use in order to help yourself be very successful. Now, if you're playing the full game, you're going to be controlling three characters each. So it's going to be three V three essentially in a two player game. And each of those characters is going to give you a card amount. So this is going to determine your hand size, counting the card amount of the three characters you have. I like this because it means that depending on the characters that you take, you can actually have a smaller hand size, which makes sense because it's kind of a balancer for some characters being really powerful. They make sure that you have a smaller hand size. Characters like Gaston only give you one card to your total hand size, whereas characters like Dr. Facilier will give three. Now, another thing that I think that this game does really well is streamline the turn order and the status effect system. It is one of the best I have seen in a game like this, and I hope that more games do this in the future. Essentially, you have these tiles that are going to be organized by turn order, and this token is going to be going down the list, activating those heroes back and forth from blue team to red team, and they're each going to take their actions. When a character has a status effect, you're going to go ahead and place one of the status effect markers right here along that token and it will show that status effect with these counters. This is a clear way to see the position of all of your characters, what status effects they have, and it's also an easy way to keep track of them. Now, another thing that I love about this game is the acrylic standees. I think these look absolutely awesome and it means that I don't have to paint anything, which is great. I don't usually paint anything anyways. These acrylic standees work very, very well. They're full colored, they look great on the table, and they come with these amazingly cool discs that track your health. Honestly, now that I think about it, this game kind of has it all. You've got a mode that is really easy for anyone to play and a mode that kind of adds a little bit more intricacies like upgrading your characters and playing three at a time. There's even a mode for team play where you can play four players in a 2v2 battle, each controlling two characters. And I gotta say, every single one of these modes has been fun when I have played them. All in all, I am really enjoying this game. I think there's a lot of depth here, but have you heard about this game? What do you think of it? Drop a comment down below, like this video if you wanna see more specific character type of videos on this game. But that is it for the video today, Disney nerds. I will see you next time.